When I was a kid, I used to dream about flying through space. Every week on TV, I'd watch my heroes as they jumped into their rocket ships and took to the stars. And I wanted to be like them. They had courage, imagination, and no problem ever stood in their way for long. You know, in the end, when we actually did send men into space, it turned out that those were exactly the qualities it took. I'm John Hudson. This is Pad 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. I was a launch controller here when from this very spot, man took off to fly to the moon. It was a journey that began 12 years before that rocket ever left the ground. And it started on the other side of the world. <laughs> Back then, we were one of two superpowers that always seemed to be on the edge of a terrible war. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first ever man-made satellite into Earth orbit. They called it Sputnik, which means traveling companion. In a world where peace hung in a delicate balance, it seemed to create a dangerous advantage. Every ham radio operator in America could hear it beeping. People were afraid. Were the Soviets looking down on us? Watching us? If they could make a satellite pass over our cities, could they do the same with a bomb? Our own space program kicked into high gear, and less than two months later, we were ready to launch our own satellite. circling the world in just 89 minutes. We had our own astronauts, and they were eager and ready to take the big ride. But our manned space program couldn't seem to get off the ground. We stuck with it, and on May 5th, 1961, things finally started going right. Astronaut Alan Shepard took his ship Freedom 7 six and a half miles into space. America had its first space hero. Just a few days later, our space program received a new challenge. But this one did not come from the Soviet Union. It came from our young president. In one inspiring moment, he changed the mission. From one based in fear of the present to one of hope for the future. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Bryce play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 16 minutes into space, and now we were going to the moon. We would have to design a rocket the size of a 36-story office building, put it together with the precision of a microscope, and accelerate it to the speed of a bullet. Then we would have to guide it to a moving target 250,000 miles away. Many people thought it was an impossible dream, but 400,000 of us set about making that dream a reality. This voyage that any man had dared to attempt. But step by step, mission by mission, we orbited the Earth, perfecting the skills and technologies we would need on this incredible journey. Our astronauts practiced maneuvering, docking, and the thousand other tasks that would comprise the moon mission. We created new alloys, lighter and stronger than anything seen before. We designed communication systems that would be reliable over the vast distances. And behind it all, we tried to perfect the rocket that would be powerful enough to punch out of Earth orbit and take us to the moon. One 
day, however, the dream of flying to the moon almost slipped away. It was January 27, 1967. Astronauts Virgil Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee were on board Apollo 1 for a plugs out test, a full scale dress rehearsal for the actual launch. Suddenly it happened. There was a fire in the capsule. Three men whose lives had been in our hands were lost. Surely the opening vistas of space promised high cost and hardships as well as high reward. But this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. After Apollo 1, some thought we'd failed and that the moon was out of our reach. But we owed it to those men to learn from their sacrifice and to carry on. We started taking the Apollo vehicle apart piece by piece. Was the design flawed? Had safety been compromised? Tough questions. And we spent one and a half years redesigning the spacecraft so that no astronaut's life would ever be at risk because we overlooked something or because we could have done something better. A moon rocket is 91% high explosive and it goes into the most unforgiving hazardous environment there is. We could never make it risk free and the men who flew them knew that. We didn't send men into space again until Apollo 7 orbited the Earth testing some of the new design. When everything worked perfectly, the decision was made. The next mission would travel to the moon. It was mankind's destiny to leave the shores of our planet behind and strike up across the vast ocean of space. In the great span of our history, now is the time that we could. Now is the time that we would. We stood on the eve of the longest, most dangerous journey that any man had ever undertaken. And it would be taken by Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Andrews, the crew of Apollo 8. Through those doors you will find the firing room, launch control, just as it was on December 21st, 1968.